Hi friends, and welcome back to our next installment of our doll project. If you haven't already downloaded it, the pattern with the body and the head instructions is available on our Patreon feed in the March 9th, 2023 post. As of this filming, the pattern attached to that post is still in progress, so you may notice some empty pages at its end when you download it. I'll be updating it and filling in those pages as I continue with the hair and clothing instructions. And I'll continue making more tutorial videos to complement the PDF. Let's begin by making some mohair wefts. I've been playing around with various ways to do this, and here are two of my favorites. The mohair will likely come in bundles like this, with all the fibers aligned and bound at one end. Carefully cut and remove the binding elastic without disturbing the fibers too much. I'm using Mod Podge Fabric Tissutella as my glue for this process because it dries clear and flexible. I've put it into a squeezable glue bottle with an applicator tip, but you can also use a paintbrush to apply the Mod Podge if you don't have one on hand. I'll provide a collection of links for supplies in our next post if you want to get some of these. To prepare, I've taped freezer paper to a work surface with its plastic side up, which I'll adhere the wefts to. Take the bundle of fiber and carefully separate a small wispy section. I like to do this from its middle while holding the bulk in my other hand. As you can imagine, this process can get a bit hairy if you don't keep control of the fiber bundle. With the wisp in hand, fold it in half and make a clean cut at its midpoint. You want to use the sharpest pair of scissors you have for this. Separate the two halves and carefully set one aside. I know I keep saying carefully, but it's because the fibers have a flyaway tendency and keeping them in check will help you make the most of your supply. Use the applicator bottle or a paintbrush to apply some Mod Podge to the cut end of the weft. Gently press and spread the glue into the ends, covering roughly one quarter to one half inch with glue. You want the glue to penetrate the cut end completely, so all the fibers are bonded when it dries. You also want the fibers of the weft to be as slim and flat as possible. Bulky wefts make bulky heads of hair, and that can sometimes be out of scale with your doll. When the weft is ready, Carefully place it onto the freezer paper without shifting the fibers at the glue end. I like to have a container of water beside me and a towel on my lap so I can clean my fingers as I make each weft. This individual weft process will appeal to some of you, but others might prefer to make their wefts in long strips and cut them after they dry. Let's take a look at that next. Apply two parallel pieces of tape separated by about one quarter inch onto your freezer paper. Then lay a bead of Mod Podge between the tape strips and spread it smooth, but not too thin. You want the fibers to sink into it a bit. When you're ready, peel away and discard the tape, leaving a crisp one quarter inch strip of glue. And remember to clean your hands often as you work. Splay the cut ends and carefully lay them onto the glue line. Repeat this over and over until you've covered the length of the glue line with a fine layer of fibers. Make sure to put pressure on the loose fibers with your hand or with an acrylic ruler so they don't shift as you smooth the top layer of glue. When you've converted your bundle of fibers into wefts, set them aside until they've dried completely. It's great to have a bit more fiber than you need. I used roughly three quarters of a 10 gram bundle to make one long haired doll. Before attaching the eyes, follow the instructions on page 10 of the PDF to stiffen the head with hairspray for face application. Make sure to let it dry completely, ideally overnight before pressing the felt surface or a whitish film may appear. With the head dried and pressed, it's time to add eyes, and if you choose to, other facial features. Let's begin with the eyes. There are two kinds of eyes you might use. The four millimeter eyes from my shop, or if you want something slightly smaller, 
you could use three millimeter glass fringe beads. I'll have fringe beads in stock soon, but in the meantime, they're available online with a quick Google search. Both are very nice, it just depends on your size preference. I ended up using the fringe beads here because on the day I was filming the attachment, I couldn't find my container of four millimeter eyes. It turns out I'm equally happy with both and their installation is almost identical. But with the fringe beads, it's important to make the hole in the face carefully. Let's take a look. My four millimeter eyes are perfectly uniform with a flat lip and a shaft with a hole on their back sides. The three millimeter fringe beads are teardrop shaped with offset holes at their narrow ends. It's important to note that they are not all uniform, so you'll need to create matching sets. To do this, I slip two onto a needle at a time and look at the large ends together to make sure they match. Sometimes this can take a few tries until you get it right. To locate the eyes, use the small triangle found on your pattern page and pin its wide point to the point of the nose. Pivot it so the two corners line up horizontally on the face. Then mark the remaining two corners with a small hole and remove the triangle. Double check that you're happy with the alignment of the eyes before moving forward. If they need adjustment, correct their placement as needed. Now widen the hole slightly with the point of a skewer, but avoid making the hole a full skewer diameter or the eyes may pop through. Thread a long darning needle with two strands of matching flesh colored floss and not one end. Pass the needle through one eye hole and exit on the head's back to the same side of the seam line as the eye. Now pull the floss through to lodge the knot in the stuffing. Then enter through the exit hole, passing the needle back through the head and front eye hole. Pick up an eye with the point of the needle and pass it through the eye hole from front to back once again. As you can see, my eye sits almost entirely on the surface. So I'll pull it back and widen the hole slightly with my skewer. By making fine adjustments to the hole at this point, you can carefully increase its size until the eye sinks into the head about halfway. For strength, make one more pass back and forth through the head, catching the eye's hole as you go, not off on the back of the head. You can hide the knot if you like, but hair will eventually cover the knot, so it's up to you. Now, repeat the same process on the remaining eye. If you're using my four millimeter eyes, the process is nearly identical. The only difference is the skewer hole must be large enough for the eye's back shaft to drop into it. Then the flat lip surrounding the shaft can rest flush on the surface of the face. If you've made any of my other animals, you'll already be familiar with this process. Somehow, I forgot to turn on the video as I was applying the freckles, eyeliner, and blush, but these steps are pretty straightforward and are explained in the PDF directions. Just for reference, I used a 005 micron pen to make the freckles and outline the eyes, then added a tiny dash at the eyes corners to create a slight almond shape. I marked the cheek color very lightly with Derwent Ink Tense Water Pencil but you could also use blush or pastels for the cheek color as well. To add a mouth, measure down four millimeters from under the nose and mark that point. Now make a small shallow U shape, about two millimeters wide, centered on the seam line. Then add a two millimeter upside down U to either side of the central U shape. Add a dot to either end of this line. This will become not quite a dimple, but just the slightest hint of a smile. Centered on the seam line just below, add another shallow U-shape to highlight the lower edge of the bottom lip. The finished mouth should measure about eight to 10 millimeters wide. 
Now use a colored pencil, blush, or pastel to color in the lips. In the PDF, you'll find several options for eyebrow shapes. Mark them in very lightly at first with a colored pencil that works with the hair color you've chosen. When you're happy with the shape, deepen the color as necessary. You can also add fine eyelashes with a 005 micron pen if you like. Now we're finally ready to add our wefts. I like to draw in a light line around the head to guide the edges of the hairline. You can use a regular pencil or a tonal colored pencil for this. Mark in several horizontal guides within the outline. You don't need to match the wefts exactly to these lines. They'll just serve as a visual guide to keep the rows straight as you go. I have several dolls in progress right now and filmed the weft application with the doll on our left. Just for fun, I decided to give her bangs, but it's easier not to, so feel free to do your own thing. To apply the wefts, I used fast grab tacky glue in one of my small applicator bottles. It's quite thick, so I opted not to use the micro tip. Trim the wefts into small pieces between one quarter inch and one half inch wide. Then trim the glue edge to about one quarter inch in depth. Apply the glue to the wefts on the glue edge, attaching the first piece to the center back bottom of the hairline. Place the weft onto the head so its transition between glue edge and loose hair aligns with the marked hairline. Continue adding wefts to the bottom row until you reach the hairline on the left and the right sides. After completing the first row, move up the head with the wefts, lapping them over each other like shingles and using your lines as a loose guide. Continue lapping and gluing wefts, moving up the line sequence. Make sure to clean your hands often as you work so as not to get glue on the loose hair. Now I'll go ahead and let the video run for a bit so you can see the full progression of the weft attachment as I move up towards the top of the head. With the light coming through this weft strip, you can see how fine the layering of the fiber is. The finer the wefts, the more you can control the hair's thickness. As I mentioned before, bulky wefts tend to make over thick heads of hair that may seem out of scale with our dolls. Remember, there's a learning curve here, and as I did, with each doll you create, you'll improve your skills and intuition. As I attach this next weft, See how I'm aligning the bottom of the glue line with my marked hairline and angling the weft ever so slightly forward. This helps the glue edge of the wefts be invisible when the hair is complete. When you're a line or two away from the hair stitched into the center seam, bind it with a pipe cleaner or braid it to keep it clean and out of the way as you attach the final few rows.
Here you can see I've added glue directly to the head. But it turned out I didn't have as much control of the glue spread when I used this method. So I would recommend adding glue to the weft rather than the head itself. As you reach the top of the head, glue one weft on either side of the hair that's stitched into the seam line, tucking their glue edges beneath where the part will cover them. I had never tried bangs before, but I decided to give it a try. It was trickier than anticipated, but with a bit of finessing, I'm happy with the result. I cut two wefts short and glued them on either side of the center seam. The gap between the bangs wefts will be filled with some of the center seam hair eventually. If you don't want bangs, just continue adding the wefts up to the center seam hair. As you're working on the top portion of the head, I encourage you to be patient and take some breaks for dry time. I was hasty and started ironing the part before my glue had dried sufficiently. By doing that, some of the glue came up through my fibers and I had to do a little extra fiddling to hide it. For my last few wefts, I butt them right up against the center seam hair, trying to be very careful with my glue. But as you can see, I was a bit enthusiastic and some oozed out under the weft's edge. That's one of the bits that gave me some trouble when I ironed it too soon. Remember to keep your hands clean as you work. You might see here I got a tiny bit of glue in the hair. I was able to get it out, but uh, it's great to have that towel and water nearby. Now for the finishing touches. You will, of course, have let your glue dry completely before moving forward. Let's take a look at how this will work. The back end of the center seam hair will come straight down to the back of the head. In the front, it will fill the gap in the bangs. Initially, the center front of the bangs will want to stick up, but I'll show you how to tame that shortly. Go ahead and take off the pipe cleaner and find the part. If you pre-press the part as I suggest in the PDF, it will be easy to find. If not, split the center seam hair and bring half over to either side and the very front portion down to fill the gap in the bangs. Okay, so here we go with my hasty ironing. I'm pressing the part and the bangs and I've got the iron set to a high setting. I'll wait to trim the bangs until I've tamed the hair a bit with heat.
I left the bangs long so I could make incremental adjustments to their length. It looks like my scissors could be a bit sharper here. I think you can see here how the glue came through. I ended up sneaking another weft under there and bringing a bit more of the part over to that side. So here I'm adding a little piece to fill out the bangs, and then I'm going to cover that piece with one more, uh, one more weft that goes down the side of the head. Now cover the head tightly with plastic wrap and put an elastic around the neck. Letting the doll sit overnight like this will help set the part and the bangs. In the morning, you can remove the wrap and press the hair where the elastic was. Next up for our doll, I'll be editing the video tutorial on needle felted hair, and I'll update the pattern with instructions to attach her arms. If you're interested in this pattern and have not yet joined our Patreon group, we'd love to have you. You can join us with a donation of your choice and cancel anytime. As a member, you'll have full access to over two years of monthly pattern designs and some bonus miniature printables too. Looking forward to seeing you there. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and follow me. It really helps my channel. Until next time, happy stitching.